Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the video. Welcome to my garage. In this video, I'm pretty much going to pick up where I left off in the last video. I'm going to show you what I came up with for a pedal assembly. I had to make some changes for the master cylinders. I'll show you what I did there. I'll show you how I hung the drive-by-wire throttle pedal. And I'll show you what I came up with for the reinforcement section of the chassis to facilitate the A-arm front suspension. Okay, so the first thing I did is I purchased a pedal assembly that has the master cylinders hanging out the back rather than the reverse, which is what I had on Mahler originally. In the last video, you saw that that just wasn't going to work. So I bought Willwood's newest hanging pedal assembly, which is really nice. They've made a couple of changes, which I love. Number one is the clutch pedal now offsets, so it spreads the distance between the brake and the clutch, which is really nice. The pedals now have these holes so that you can actually unbolt the pedal and you can move it a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right, which is great to give you some adjustability. And then they also have bolts down here where you can unbolt these and you've got a little bit of a room to adjust the pedals up or down so that you can fine tune the fitment, which is really nice. So I was really, the price is the same. They just, this is the third hanging pedal assembly I've bought from them and each one keeps getting better and better. If you guys are interested, I'll put the part number of this in the description. So once I had that, then I made this quarter inch mounting plate back here for the pedal assembly. Then the next problem I ran into is I was using I was using Willwood's three quarter inch large volume master cylinder. This is what I used in Mahler originally, and I used these in Ratchet. But everything up front here on Mahler, because Mahler's a couple inches shorter, is more condensed, and I didn't have room for this master cylinder and the front shock absorbers. They didn't clear in here. So I found these master cylinders also by Willwood. I'll also put a link in the description for these if you're curious. These are also three quarter bore. These are about an inch shorter. And another big difference is on this one, the port is in the front. On these, the port is back here. So it really gained me a lot of space up front here. And now I've got plenty of room for the shock absorber and the springs. So then once I had all that, I made this mounting tab for my drive-by wire throttle pedal. It's got wing nuts on there right now, but the final assembly will have nylon lock nuts. And then I was able to get everything spread out pretty well, where you can hit everything without too much trouble. I, I do have this bar right here. It's probably closer to the throttle pedal than it should be. It might be a problem, I'm not sure, but I didn't want to get the throttle pedal over too far because I like to have a lot of clearance around the brake pedal so that you can always hit that without bumping into the clutch or the throttle. So I'll see how that is, but I think it's going to be fine. What I was trying to do is get everything up nice and high, which I did, and nice and spread apart. And then on the clutch pedal, this is what I did on ratchet also. I set the clutch pedal up so that it's right in line with the tube behind it. Because I like to have a physical stop on the clutch. So you see when you hit that, what I do is I weld a little nut here. And then you can just put a 3 8 bolt in there. And that's your clutch pedal stop. And then all you got to do is just take this out and put in a different length bolt if you want to adjust your stop there. So for the pedal assembly and the throttle pedal, that's what I came up with and I'm actually really happy with that. It gives me a lot of room. I think that's going to work really well. Then after that, I told you on Ratchet and Mauler, his steering shaft, which goes from the rack and pinion here on an angle, up to the steering. On Ratchet and Muller's original chassis, I was able to come through here, come real close, and then come up to wherever the steering wheel would be. Now, because this pedal assembly is a little bit larger 
than the originals. And with Mahler, it's a little bit more congested here. I decided it just wasn't going to be possible to bring this through in one pass. So what I did is I, I put this heim in there. That heim is designed for steering shafts. It's slightly overbore. And I'll put a link, I'll put a link for that as well. And what I did is I put that in there and then I'm adding a U-joint right here, which I really don't like to do, but I decided just to keep things functional under here. I would go that route. So I've got a U-joint right here. And then of course, this is gonna turn this way. And wherever my steering wheel ends up going, this will just continue and connect to the steering wheel up there. So not something that I love doing. I really like to have just the one solid shaft, but with the way everything was going up here, I didn't want to make any sacrifices to the pedal assembly, like the height or having to push it over more or anything like that. So I just decided to break it up and add a U-joint there. Then I needed to, to add these bars in here to tie in the front section of the A-arm suspension to the chassis. If you don't have bars like this that triangulate into the chassis, you would have these bars going down the middle and then you would have your suspension coming off to the side. This suspension puts incredible twisting forces on these bars going through here. Everything that these tires are hitting is twisting this way or that on this center section. And if you come up here and if you just rely on these tubes, which really aren't doing much, I think over time this would flex and you'd probably start cracking welds and all sorts of stuff. So I always like to get a set of triangulated bars coming from the chassis down to the main section. But then where this bar comes up, you have to reinforce that tube because that bar is just transferring all of that energy to this bar. Then you need bars to then dissipate that energy out into the chassis. So with that, I then added this section, which ties into the, let's call this the door bar section. That transfers everything back there. And then that had to be triangulated. Otherwise, if this bar was here without these, it really wouldn't have much strength. And then same goes for this. This bar had to be added because if this was pushing on this bar, even with that bar in place, this bar would then have a tendency to be flexing back and forth this way. So I had to add that bar. I did the same thing on the other side. There's the tube running up. I didn't add that bar because I've got this quarter inch plate going through there. So I'm assuming that's going to put stability into that tube. And then I've got the same thing going over here. Those are tied down into here. Now on ratchet, this bar is all the way up here because ratchet's got no doors. So he got, he's got the door bar going up there and then all the triangulation. But Mahler here has doors, so I have to focus all of the energy down here, which is totally fine. But those are some of the differences as to why Ratchet is a stronger chassis than Muller. Then, of course, this bar had to be... I had to make sure with this bar that it wasn't going to interfere with anything, but it, I, make sure it didn't interfere with the steering. And it didn't interfere with the shock absorber or any of the control arms. You can see here it clears the shock absorber. And most importantly... It clears the lower control arm as it comes up. And then at full droop, the upper control arm starts to get close to it, but it doesn't hit it. There's about three quarters of an inch gap in there. So everything clears. Same thing with the shock absorber, even when the coils are on there, everything clears. Um, which it doesn't look like much, but when you're laying all that out, I had to assemble the suspension you have to cycle everything, and you just kind of have to mock everything up in place and tack it before you make all of this solid. Of course, you saw at the beginning of this video, I went through and uh, welded all that stuff solid. All right, that was a lot of chit chat, guys, but you know, this channel is kind of about me really explaining 
what I'm doing and why I'm doing things. So I wanted to break all of that out. The next step is I need to figure out how I'm gonna build the dashboard so I can figure out where my steering column is going to be. Now that I've got this stuff out of the way, I can kind of start wrapping my brain around that. That's typically how I do things is in an area like this where I've got the suspension, chassis, brakes, steering, where there's so many things coming into play at the same time, I try to break it into smaller pieces. So what I did in my brain is I said, you know what, I'm gonna forget about the steering wheel and the dashboard for now because that doesn't tie in too much except for the steering shaft to this front area. So let me figure out the front area first, which I just did, that is done now. Then I can take a step back, put the seat in there, and see where I want to set up the dashboard and how I want to do that. So that will be the next video. <laughs> All right, so thanks for watching the video, guys. Hope it's helping you with whatever you might be working on, and I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.